Hi, everyone. Welcome to Aurelian Coaching Weekly. I'm Nicole Lippman. This week, we are talking about how to conduct a really good interview. So if you are a manager, you are probably responsible for hiring people after there's some turnover or if there's growth and you need to expand your team, right? You're probably the person that is going to have to ultimately be responsible for recruiting and interviewing and all of those things. Now, this is not about just limiting to, to the people who have 100% control. You may need to work with your HR department. Um, you may have other team members that are participating in the interviews. You may ultimately not have the final say, and maybe you're just making recommendations up to leadership uh, who will make the final decision regardless. The bottom line is that when you have to interview, when you have to hire for somebody, it takes so much time and energy. It's just, it's such a time suck, right? And you have all these things that you need to do, that you need to get done. And so my goal here is to help you guys make that interview process super, super efficient. Okay. I ran call centers for many years, as many of you know. Call centers are, they have this reputation of just being horrible, horrible for turnover. And a lot of companies and a lot of managers just kind of accept that that's the fact of the matter. You know, you just, call centers have really high turnover. I didn't want to have that. And so I tried to solve for the turnover problem and I got really, really good at evaluating candidates. And so I'm going to give you guys my strategies today. Um, there are five golden rules for conducting an interview super well, super efficiently. And I'm going to go through those today. Even if, just a little bit of a sidebar, even if you are not responsible for interviewing or you're not participating, you should still listen up. You know why? Because you can use this stuff when you are interviewing, <laughs> when you're on the other side of the table, when you're on the other side of the desk. Even if you are interviewing for somebody who doesn't know to interview very well, if you follow these golden rules, oh my gosh, you're going to knock it out of the ballpark. You're going to be so good. Okay, so let's get started. Number one, first golden rule of conducting an interview well is to do behavioral interviewing. So uh, this is, if you guys are not familiar, this is based on lots of research that says that people do not what they say they're going to do. They do what they have always done, okay? Not rocket science, but it's interesting because nobody takes this into interviews for jobs, right? A lot of interview questions are theoretical, they're hypothetical, they're abstract. Don't do that. Ask for concrete examples every single time, okay? Now, what this means is that you would have to value a real life concrete example that somebody gives you outside of the workplace over a hypothetical example in the workplace, right? Okay, so here's what this looks like. If you are asking a question about a particular scenario and the candidate is responding with, well, if I were in that situation, I would do this, I would ask these questions, I would handle it this way. I can't use it, okay? What you want them to do is say, I remember the time when this happened and this was the reaction and this was the reality and this is how it played out, okay? That's what you want. So for any job description, you're gonna have a list of skills. You're gonna have a list of candidate qualities, right? There's gonna be some, some set of requirements in the interview process, make sure that you're asking people to demonstrate 
not what they would do, but what they have done. Okay, so that's that's number one. Number two, <laughs> this is a pet peeve of mine. It has to do with teamwork. It's very rare these days that you have a job that doesn't involve some level of teamwork. And a lot of times, teamwork is pretty critical to being successful in a position. Here's the problem with how teamwork is, or teamwork capability is being evaluated during the interview process. That people are not honing in on what true teamwork is. So let me tell you what true teamwork is. Teamwork is interaction, okay? So this has to do with how you're communicating with colleagues, conflict resolution, um, where there were disagreements and how you got through it, how you worked on something together, okay? A lot of times what people will talk about is what they personally did as an individual contributor when they were working in a team. That's not what you want. What you want is for them to describe actual teamwork brainstorming, conflict resolution, right? A really good one, if you, if you wanna take this to like the pro level, is when you're asking people to describe a time when they noticed a fellow team member had a barrier and what they did to resolve that barrier for that team member and how they worked together with that team member to resolve that barrier, for the betterment of the project, to move the entire team forward? Oh, that's golden. I love that question, okay? So if you are evaluating for teamwork skills, make sure that you hone in on how the individual um, interacts with other team members, not just what they did. Um, a common example, so I used to hire um, for entry-level positions, so I hired a lot of uh, college candidates, people right out of school or they hadn't even graduated yet and they were looking for their first job out of school. And I asked the teamwork question and I, nine times out of 10, I got examples of people who were working on a class project with I don't know how many other people and they just split up the work and then they like went for a week and did their piece of the project and then they came back and kind of put it all together for the final, I, I was like, that is not teamwork, <laughs> That's a, you know, it, no. So interaction is what you want. Okay, the third golden rule is pretty straightforward. If there are certain technical requirements uh, or technical skills that you need somebody to have in that role, take that assessment offline. Don't take up Q&A time. Don't ask questions about skills. Just, just take the time that you need to put a test together, an assessment, whatever that evaluation is. Put them in a room and say, you've got 30 minutes, go do that thing, okay? And that's just gonna be a piece of it. But don't spend all the, the question and answer time evaluating somebody's uh, technical skills. You don't need to. Okay, fourth golden rule. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this because it's so important. This is a trap that a lot of managers fall into when they are evaluating candidates, and that is that they hire people that are just like them. <laughs> and you may even say, oh, no, 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 I don't do that, I don't do that. Here's the thing, it's human nature, okay? It's human nature to gravitate toward what is familiar, right? And here's the thing, by the time you are in a management role, a lot of times the, the position that you're interviewing for is a position that you had, and it's a position that you were wildly successful in that resulted in the promotion, right? So you have a lot of confidence about knowing exactly what is needed to do that, do that job well. Here's the thing, a couple of things. 
One is that the circumstances, the environmental factors, certainly the personalities, there are things about that position today that are going to be different than when you had the position. And you don't want to underestimate the impact of those differences, okay? So don't hire a clone, right? And expect that person to just do it exactly the same, okay? Number two is that your success trajectory is not the only path, okay? I know it's the path that's most familiar, and I know it's the path that you are the most confident in because you went through it, okay? But lots of other people can find totally different paths to success. And if you're a good manager, it's your job to help them find their own path, not, not necessarily to replicate your own path. Okay, and here's the, th the third piece that is the most important piece to this. And that is that you always want to hire for what the, the role or the team needs, which might be different than what looks and feels familiar to you, okay? You want to fill gaps. You want to round out the team. And if you're hiring a bunch of people that act like you and make decisions like you and, and you have a lot of confidence that they would just follow in your footsteps and, and deliver the same way that you did, you are perpetuating all of the gaps in the team and not rounding it out, okay? Now, I know again, this is human nature, right? So I know it is harder to, um, to move somebody forward or advance them in the interview process when you are just not as familiar with how to work with that type of person. Maybe they make decisions differently. Maybe they have a different work experience than you do. But if they would fill in gaps, and fill in your own blind spots, oh, now you're getting to a level of sophistication in management that is going to be so key for success going forward, right? You don't want to have a bunch of clones <laughs> around you. So in the interview process, the golden rule number four is to always hire for need rather than comfort. Okay, don't go with just what's super familiar. Go with what the team, what the project needs. How can you elevate the team? How can you elevate the performance? Reach your goals quicker, more efficiently, better with this hire. Okay, let's not replicate necessarily if that's not going get to you, get you closer. Okay. And then finally is, again, the whole point of this is how do you interview efficiently? If you've got team members, go ahead and leverage them, right? Maybe they don't have any decision making in this process, but they could be a great way to evaluate somebody for fit, right? I hate this term, but it's the reality of it. A lot of companies want to make sure that the candidate that they ultimately hire would be a good cultural fit for the organization. And if that's the case, the way you can do that is leverage your team members, right? So if you have other direct reports, right, have them participate in the process. Now, you want to be really clear about what the expectations are of the, the team members, right? So you need to just be really clear about whether they have a vote <laughs> in any of the candidates that they're interviewing, whether you're just looking for feedback, or whether it's just a meet and greet. And it's nothing more than that, and all they need to give you are like significant red flags, right? Whatever the case may be, right? Save yourself some time. Get somebody else to do that piece of it. Certainly, if you've already 
interviewed them, you will have your own opinion about that fit. But it's probably a good idea if you have, um, if, if that's a possibility to get others involved too. Five golden rules. <laughs> Behavioral interviewing, right? Teamwork, true teamwork capability, right? Go ahead and take the assessments offline. Hire for need over comfort or familiarity, right? And get others involved, especially around uh, issues of fit. Those are my golden rules, okay? So pay attention to those even if you are not, you know, hiring, but if you're gonna be hiring in the future, something to keep in mind, or if you yourself are gonna be interviewing. Make sure you've got tons of examples. You know what, okay, this is a side note. <laughs> this is my super, super special treat, my kick butt strategy for when you are interviewing for a position, okay? I'm just gonna throw this in there. When you are going into interviews, make sure you have two, three stories of just your most phenomenal accomplishments and hone those stories, right? Do the storytelling, right? So um, describe the situations, uh, create, you know, the, the conflict or the drama around it and how it played out and what the resolution was. Always have that in your back pocket, okay? So you're going to be planning for, you know, what the, how to answer questions as it relates to the job requirements and stuff like that, but always have a few really good stories in your back pocket because number one, there are always going to be questions that you didn't anticipate. And so you'll have to kind of pull, pull from something. And if you have two or three stories in your back pocket, and because they're some of your greatest accomplishments, you know them like the back of your hand, right? Those are the types of things where you can tease out certain points from those stories to emphasize, to answer a question that you didn't anticipate. So that's my freebie. I love giving that, that advice to people going into interviews. Okay, so that's the scoop this week. If you want to join Skill Masters and get um, weekly tools around some of this stuff, you can go to AureliaCoaching.com and sign up for free. Next week, we are going to be talking about creativity. And this is another one where I think people think they know what what they mean by creativity, but you really don't. And so in order to be creative in the job, and even if you have a job where it's kind of day in, day out, you may not think that you need a lot of creativity. Creativity doesn't hurt. And so next week we are going to be talking about what it means, how to increase creativity, how to practice it, and bring it into your job and see huge success there. So that's the scoop. Have a great rest of the week and weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks.